Good evening, friends. Welcome back to the eighth lecture on managerial economics. So far, we have studied what is economics, what is managerial economics, what are the principles that are associated with managerial economics. Now, when we say managerial economics, we need to understand that where are these decisions taken? In what context these decisions are taken? The exact organization or exact place where these decisions are taken. These decisions are exactly taken, of course, the decisions that are related with managerial economics, what to produce, whom to produce, what, when to produce, for whom to produce, how to produce, all these things they are taken in the case of firm, FIRM. Most of the times, we interchangeably use the word firm and industry. Supposing if someone asks you, where do you work? We say that I work in that industry. My dear friends, industry is a group of firms working in a particular sector or maybe in different sectors. Many times we use this word interchangeably and during interviews we answer the question that firm is same as industry or industry is same as a firm. It's not that. Firm is a subset of an industry or in other words industry comprises of firms manufacturing in a particular sector that is automobile sector or maybe in different sectors say for example automobile sector banking sector so on and so forth today we'll be talking primarily about what is a firm it's an entity that draws various types of factors of production as you might be aware in your graduation studies what are the factors of production land labor capital enterprise technology so on and so forth. In different amounts from the economy that draws, a firm is an entity that draws various factors of production in different amounts. Say for example, some industries might be capital intensive, some industries might require more labor as compared to other sectors of the industry. Some enterprises, they don't require labor, they don't require capital that much, but they require, say for example, land. So anywhere that draws various factors of production in different amounts from the economy and converts them, it does not simply draw and converts them into desirable outputs, right? Desirable outputs. Now, the word important here is desirable. So what is a firm? It's an entity that draws various factors of production in different amounts from the economy and converts them into desirable outputs through a process. Here, through a process, when we say that, we mean that we use technology to convert different factors of production into desirable outputs with the help of suitable technology, right? You use a certain process by using certain technologies. So that is what a firm is all about, right? A firm is not, say, for example, XYZ company. No, that's not firm. What does it do? It draws various factors of production from the economy in different amounts, not in equal amounts, right? In different amounts means not in unequal amounts. In different amount means as the output desires, depending upon the type of the output, quantities are drawn, factors of production, the quantities are drawn from the economy, 
and they are converted into desirable outputs through a process with the help of suitable technology. Suitable technology. Every single word in this definition gives you a clear understanding about what a firm is all about. It's very simple to understand the concept of firm. It's a place, like it has been discussed, it's a place, it's an organization where various factors of production are drawn in different quantities from the economy to convert them into desirable outputs through a process with the help of suitable technology. Every single word is relevant. Most of the times when we try to understand certain concepts, what happens is we try to understand the concept from one dimensional perspective. Though the sentence appears to be long, but it is relevant. My dear students, this is the advice that I give to most of my students that try to understand or try to write, try to read what is relevant. The word important is relevant. Now you'll see that what is relevant with respect to my area of studies. You are into business administration, right? You are undergoing a course called business administration, wherein you need to understand first and foremost the concept of decision making. What is a decision? How do you take decisions? What is an organization? What is a firm? Right? A firm is a different entity. An in organization, we again interchangeably use firm and organization, right? Organization generally refers to, it is used with respect, when you use it in the context of human resource management. When you talk about economics, you talk in terms of entity, right? An entity. An entity means structural form, wherein you can say that certain things are put in place so as to achieve certain outcomes, certain desired outcomes with the help of processes and suitable technology. So very simple to understand, yet the simplicity comes, the simplicity in understanding comes from a lot of reading which is relevant to your course of study. So always don't do correct things, don't do right things, do relevant things, talk of some relevance. So why I'm talking about this, emphasizing more on relevances, tomorrow you might be applying for a job or you might have your own firm. When you are in the job, you get promoted only when you talk something of relevance, right? Relevance does not mean only important. Is it whatever you are speaking, is it in the context of that particular situation, time, efforts, so on and so forth. So whenever we try to understand something, understand its relevance. Each and every word over here speaks of relevance. Now, what are the types of firms? Private sector, joint sector and public sector. Private sector wholly owned by individuals or a group of individuals. There are two types of private sector enterprises or private sector firms. Sole proprietorship, where there is a single owner. Partnership wherein there is more than one or two people, more than one people who have come together with the sole objective of doing business. Joint sector, owned and managed jointly by individuals and governments. That's joint sector. In that also we have private limited companies and public limited companies. In private limited companies, maximum shareholders are 50 and private limited companies, 
maximum shareholders there's no limit but minimum limit is number 7 in a public limited company there have to be not less than 7 members as shareholders public sector here also we can talk about one sector that's called as cooperative sector though cooperative sector does not deal in business meant for profits it is formed with an economic objective now what is an economic objective here not financial objective economic objective economic objective you have a cooperative say for example <coughs> to uplift women like a joint sector effort in the form of cooperative sector we can take the example of uh, Mahila Guru Udyogs they have come together they form a cooperative with an economic objective of helping each and every weaker section of the society that is the women that's a good example of cooperative sector coming together for the aim of economic activity economic objective public sector owned managed and controlled by government owned managed and controlled by government examples public sector units like NTPC, SAIL, BSNL, these are what public sector undertakings, form of public sector firms. Corporate, corporations are boards, corporation like Khadi Village Industries Commission, Coil Board, Food Corporation of India or Railway Boards, these are examples of corporations. Departments. Health Department, Education Department, Excise Department, Post and Telegraph Department. These are what? These are forms of public sector undertakings. Now, every firm is established for two different reasons. Number one, sales maximization and profit maximization. Sales maximization, increasing the sales. Profit maximization, increasing going for higher profits larger profits right so these are the sole objectives of having any kind of firm if these two objectives are not there that means that firm is a joint sector enterprise in the form of cooperative sector now it is not possible just by wishing to increase the sales or increase maximize the profits you have to have certain methodology certain process certain concepts certain theories associated with these two objectives of every firm what does a particular theory do in the case of firms that's theory of firms influences decision making in the following areas right what are the two areas over here four areas over here every entity can achieve sales maximization or profit maximization only if it takes decisions in resource allocation how much resource is to be allocated when the resource is to be allocated from where you are going to raise the resources, when you are going to use those resources, that is, if the firm is doing well, extremely well, are you going to go for expansion and raise further resource mobilization? So how do you allocate resources? The timing of resource allocation also plays an important role in achieving sales maximization or profit maximization objectives of a firm. So you have to take a decision, my dear friends. Remember, every time I told you in the last few lectures, that you will be taking a lot of decisions with respect to your career, with respect to your marriage, with respect to your job, within job, whether you want to continue in that particular job, if you are staying in the job, for how long you need to stay in the job, if you're going to stay for a longer period of time, what are you going to do? What will be your targets? If you're going to stay for shorter term, from where you're going to shift to the next job, what are you going to do? 
in which sector you are going to go, from which sector you are going to go to another sector. So these are the types of decisions that we will be taking. So theory of firm influences decision making in resource allocation, production techniques, right? The techniques that are associated with production, are you going to go with stable techniques, intensive techniques or slow techniques or whatever it is, depending upon the type of product or services that you manufacture or you provide. Pricing adjustments, going by the nature of the product, going by the nature of markets, going by the phases and business, phases of business cycles, right? Going by the different phases of economy, how you're going to tweak the prices so that there is demand, there is always a demand for the product, which is going to lead to sales maximization or profit maximization, achieving the objective. So pricing adjustments, if the demand is high, are you going to go for increasing prices? If the supply is more, are you going to go for decreasing the prices or not? Whatever it is, right? So every decision requires certain skill sets, certain experience, certain knowledge, right? And certain awareness of the market conditions. Volume of production, simply having good techniques, having proper resources and good pricing is not going to help you. You got to decide about even the volume of production, how much volume you're going to produce, at what times, at what costs, at what pricing strategies you are going to produce. So everything has to be taken into consideration and taken a decision which is going to lead to profit maximization, that being the primary goal, and also sales maximization. Now there are two approaches with respect to theory of firm. What is the theory of firm state? It influences what it does do, it influences decision making in the area of resource allocation, production techniques, pricing adjustments and volume of productions, right? So how does it occur? How is it done? There are two approaches. Neoclassical approach refers to the approaches of Adam Smith and company. Right? That's what we call it as neoclassical approach. Now, what is a classical approach? A classical approach states that production, distribution and consumption of goods and services is possible when there is full employment and there is ample amount of income. Right? That is the classical approach to economics. So what is their approach? What is their theory? They focus only on maximization of profits, right? They focus more mainly on maximization of profits. How are they going to do? They emphasize on what type of products they are going to manufacture. How is income going to be distributed? How is market going to be controlled through supply and demand? So everything it has leveraging something or the other so that we maximize our profits, right? If there is no demand, what are we going to do? If there is more supply, what is what are we going to do? What are we going to do if there are no incomes to spend? What are we going to do if there are no goods that are being manufactured? Are they being desired or not? How are you going to be advertisement strategies? How are you going to be marketing strategies? All these things they are studied in neoclassical approach. The other approach that is known as modern approach, what does it state? It focuses on motivation to do business. It's a more recent approach towards the firm's existence. Why do firms exist? Or why is there the need for firms to exist, to carry on their business? Here this approach focuses largely on motivation to do business. Why do we want to do business? 
if you have answers to this question, either you want to maximize your sales or you want to maximize your profits, it will give rise to two situations that will be taking decisions with respect to two time zones, long run decisions and short run decisions. Long run decisions, they are taken so that the business sustains, stays afloat in the long run. Now for a business to stay afloat or to, sus to become sustainable in the long run, it needs capital infusions over periodic intervals. Capital infusion means after certain intervals of time, you need to have capital infusion. New, tech, new capital should be pumped into the business to run the business. That is the long-term approach in the case of modern approach. That is a long-term motivational goal. That is a long-term goal of business, doing business, so that our business is sustainable. Does it hold on its own? That type of decision that needs to be taken. And what is the short-term aim of doing business? Say within one year. Within one year, you're trying to do business so as to maximize profits. Now, how are you going to do that? By pushing up the sales and bringing the cost down. That is the one way of doing profit maximization. Now, now why we are talking about these approaches is because Business works in a dynamic environment. Why? Economy does not stay in the same phase forever. It keeps on changing. Like for example, recently we have we are undergoing through different stages of pandemic. Right? So pandemic gives rise to dynamic situations and accordingly people need, firms need to take decisions regarding the manufacture of products and services and provision of services. So every day it's a challenge, every moment is a challenge in the firm's life. Now what are the scenarios wherein firms need to take decisions that is what we are discussing over here. With this modern approach says, it focuses on motivation to do business, why we want to do business. Here, how to do business, why to do business, how to do business. But of late, this approach seems to be in sync with the modern term, times. Why modern times? is because the whole world has become one single largest market for any type of product or any type of service. So hence, it, this approach is largely being accepted by a lot of firms. Say for example, Bajaj Auto decides to have, to own a company which is there in US. Now, why it is making that effort is because they want to make their businesses sustainable. Sustainable means they don't want to restrict themselves to Indian markets. They want themselves to be exposed to world markets so that the products that are being manufactured at place A can be sold at place B so that the sales are maximized and also profits are maximized. Now, to do business somewhere else, you require huge amounts of capital. So now you cannot, now businesses are not restricted to geographical locations, right? It is not that Indian products are being consumed by Indians only. Indian products are being consumed by Indians as well as people residing outside India also. For every firm, the whole world has become one single largest market. So hence it makes sense to have acceptance of modern approach. That's all for now. From tomorrow, tomorrow maybe we'll be talking about different theories of firms. It's profit maximization theory, 
Williamson Bumble's theory of sales maximization or Simon Satisfaction model or Sayat and Marx model. Thank you. Take care.